Now what I'd like you to do is I mentioned in the introduction to this um, clip is I'd like you to find the spreadsheet that talks about short run costs and you might want to even print it out or at least have it available to you uh, to look at as we're going through this. There's a table on the front that shows a variety of costs for a hypothetical manufacturer in choosing output levels going from 1 to 10. And there are numbers going across, and you'll see some formulae for those below. I'm going to let you sort of figure those out, check with the text. Hopefully they'll make some sense. And now what we're going to do is actually look at how those appear on a, um, on a graph. Now the first graph we're going to look at with these uh, large curved lines and the one straight line are our three components of what we call total cost. Let's look at this green line for the f to begin with. This green line is total fixed cost. If you look on the table in the Excel spreadsheet, you'll see that fixed costs are $60 no matter if we were making one widget or up to 10 widgets. So the total fixed costs are going to remain at 60 bucks, and that's why it's a straight line going horizontally. The red line is total variable costs. This is the how much we're going to spend depending on how much output we have. If we have zero output, as you can see here, then there's zero variable cost. But if we make one item, then our variable costs are going to go up. And as we make more items, our variable costs go up. So that's what the red line is, total variable cost. Finally, this black line is total, total cost, total, total cost. And what this means is the sum or the combination of the variable cost, of the fixed cost, I'm sorry, the fixed cost, the green line, and the red variable cost line. In fact, what we do is at every point along this red variable cost line, we just add the fixed cost to it, the 60. So the difference between the variable cost here in this where this triangle is and the total cost, that vertical distance is 60. And we keep that same vertical distance all the way up going up to the top. Okay, so this is a graph. It's sort of descriptive, but it's actually not going to help us make decisions very much. We're going to go on to another graph. Lots to look at here, and again, the spreadsheet that you have has its own copy if you want to make some notes on it. Let us uh, let me just describe these, and then we'll cut this particular uh, tutorial off and start again in a bit. First of all, look at this blue line that curves down like this. This is average fixed cost. If you see back in the formulas on the first page, average fixed cost says, let's take our total fixed cost, i.e. the $60, and let's divide it by the number of items we're making. Well, if we make just one item and we have to total fixed cost of $60, then 60 divided by 1 is 60. That's what that point is right there that I'm circling. If we expand our production to make two items, now we have that $60 fixed cost divided by 2, and this dot is at 30. If we have 3, then, we're, then the average fixed cost is 20. Notice how quickly this drops, and then it kind of almost flattens out. It doesn't really flatten out, but it gets shallower and shallower. And this is just sort of an algebraic phenomenon that happens when you have um, a fixed cost thing, and you're dividing it by a greater and greater uh, number in the denominator. And you get this big drop and then this flattening out. Now, variable costs are, is this kind of magenta line right here, is this kind of magenta line. And what this shows is that as we increase production, our variable, our average variable cost kind of goes down a little bit. Why might that be? Well, as you increase production, maybe you introduce some efficiencies into your system. You can make better use of specialization among your workers. Maybe you can get some volume discounts or something on your raw materials. So as your production increases, you enjoy a little bit of savings here in average variable cost. But at some point, average variable costs start rising. And that's because at some point in your production, trying to squeeze out seven, eight, nine or so more items gets harder, less efficient, and sometimes your costs will start going up. Now if we add those two together, I'm going to ignore the red line for a second, if we add the blue average fixed cost line and the magenta average variable cost line, if we add those two together, we get the average total cost, and that's what this green line is. Notice how the green line drops pretty dramatically, and that's because two things are happening. 
First, in this sort of early low phase of production, the average fixed cost drops pretty drastically. And at the same time, average variable costs are dropping. So if you kind of add those together, you can see that your total cost drops pretty quickly. After a while, however, the average fixed cost line doesn't drop as much. And at some point, the average variable cost starts going up. So what we see in average total cost is this initial very sharp drop. Then it starts kind of flattening out and even starts going up after a while. The final line is this red one, which is the marginal cost. And you'll see and remember from your reading, see on the table and then remember from your reading, that marginal cost is the addition to total cost by making one more item. You make one more item, how do your total costs change? And they start here and then they go down, again, some efficiencies, and then at some point some inefficiencies creep in and they start going up. The uh, marginal cost line is going to end up being a very important line for us when we're making decisions about how much we're going to produce. We're going to save that for the next clip.